All right, Biology 11. Um, I wanted to put together a little sort of bonus lecture here for you to help you prep for the uh, circulatory system quiz tomorrow. Uh, a lot of the stuff we've already talked about already, but I'm just going to go a little bit more into detail and remind you of some things. Um, this handout, the mammalian heart, this was added to your Edsby uh, wall today, and it's got all the same parts on it that we talked about in the previous video. I just wanted to go you know, over it again in a little bit of detail. Um, what I did with this diagram, and all the labels here are good, but what I did with this diagram is I highlighted the arrows with red or pink for the oxygenated side and with blue with the deoxygenated side. And remember, when you're looking at this heart diagram, this is the right side of the you know field of view but it's the left side of the heart because you're staring at you know you're staring into someone's chest this is the right side even though it's the left side of the board it's the right side of the heart as you stare into their chest and see it right they're the opposite of you so um if we look here i just want to you know trace through the flow of blood through the heart and We'll start again on the right side like we did in the previous lecture. So deoxygenated or used up blood with no oxygen from the upper body comes in through the superior vena cava right here. Used up blood, oxygen poor or deoxygenated blood, it's used up by the lower body, comes in from the inferior vena cava here. So you have superior above the heart, inferior below the heart. They meet at the right atrium. And then the blood is pushed downward through this valve, a one-way doorway, into the left ventricle, right? The atria are the top chambers of the heart. The ventricles are the bottom chambers of the heart. Then the blood from the ventricle gets pushed upward. Now, it can't go back up in this direction because valves are one-way doorways. So the blood gets pushed upward and through this pulmonary valve. Pulmonary means lungs, so this is a one-way doorway to the lungs right here. And it goes up through that valve, out to the pulmonary artery, which looks like a slingshot. It's got the handle here, and one way goes this way, the other way, you know, like a fork in the road. They go in opposite direction. And these go to the lungs. This would be the left lung over here, right? It would be in this area of the diagram, and the right lung would be here. So it goes out to the lungs, we breathe in, get a good bunch of oxygen diffused into the blood through the alveolar wall, right? That's covered with those capillaries. And now we have to bring the blood back to the heart so it can be distributed as oxygen rich blood now out to the rest of the body. So here we have the pulmonary veins and these return from the lungs. Remember veins mean to come back to the heart. So back from the left lung, back from the right lung and they meet right here. They meet at the left atrium. And the left atrium receives the oxygen rich blood and pumps it downward, right? So if you look at it, there's a one way doorway here, another valve between the left atrium and left ventricle. And then the ventricle, and one thing I should notice, or you should notice, the atria have muscular walls. So you can see this black material here, that's muscle. But if you look at the ventricles down here, the muscle is much, much more noticeable, much more prominent, much thicker. The ventricles have much thicker muscular walls because they have to pump the blood up against gravity. The atria goes down. Gravity is helping the atria move blood down here and move blood down here. So their muscular walls are nearly as thick as the ventricles. So the oxygen-rich blood comes in through the left atrium down into the left ventricle then up through another one-way doorway called the aortic valve and that's obviously because it goes to the aorta which will distribute blood to the upper body and then it curls down and around to the lower body and then of course the blood gets used up or the oxygen does and it returns in these two areas here all right now one thing i wanted to go over were the valves in the heart all right, they've got several names. So I have this diagram and I posted this to Edsby. I'll get rid of this because we don't need it. It's already 
on here, right and left. So this was posted to Edsby, this diagram, and notice that I put left over here and right over here. Right is in blue because it's oxygen depleted or poor blood. Left is in red because it's oxygen rich blood. And we can see all these numbers on here, all right? Um, I hope you can make them out in the video. If not, download that diagram and I'll write the numbers down here of all the parts, all right? So same thing, I'm staring at this like I'm staring into somebody's chest and I can see it so again, left side of the paper but right side of the heart. Right side of the screen or the paper, left side of the heart. You guys understand that now. So let's go through and what I want to do first is just identify the four valves, all right? The four valves. So the first valve we're going to identify is over here. It's right here. It's between the right atrium and right ventricle. So that valve, number four on the diagram, right here, it can go by a couple of names. One is the tricuspid valve. All right, so the tricuspid valve is a common name for it, and it's the valve that is between the right atrium and right ventricle. It also gets the name the right AV valve. Now, the right AV valve, what it means is atrioventricular. I'll write that out. That's a tricky one. So AV stands for atrioventricular. And it basically means the one-way doorway between the atrium and the ventricle. So this is the right, because it's on the right side, right? AV valve or tricuspid valve. If you had to label a diagram in class, and number four was on it, I'm good with either of these names, all right? Now, we have another valve on this side which serves the same purpose, and it's number nine in our diagram. Here's number nine, and it's this valve right here. Again, it's between the left atrium and left ventricle. And that one, I'll label it in red because it's on this side where the oxygen-rich blood is. So number nine, right here, it is known as the bicuspid valve or the left AV valve. So we have two AV valves, one on the right side, one on the left side, and they are the one-way doors between atria and ventricles. All right? Or you can say bicuspid, or sorry, tricuspid, bicuspid, it's up to you. Now, we have these two valves right here in the middle of the heart that go up and out of the heart to blood vessels. This one right here, it's number 16 on the diagram, is the one that leads to that slingshot. You can see it goes up and then it divides into the two halves. This is oxygen poor blood on the right side and it's going out to the lungs. So number 16, that is the pulmonary valve, right? Right here. It goes up to the pulmonary artery, which goes, remember, artery away, they both serve it, and out to the lungs. And then we have, over here, this fourth valve of the heart, which goes up through to the aorta. And of course, that one is called... Um, what number is it? It's number 15 in the diagram right here, number 15. And that's called the aortic valve. All right. Now you can write those on that diagram. I will fill this one out and post it to Edsby after this lecture. But those are the four valves. All right. I wanted to address those first. Sometimes these two that are in the middle are called semilunar valves, the semilunar valves. But I like to be a little bit more specific where one goes to the pulmonary artery, one goes to the, one goes to the aorta. So use aortic valve and pulmonary valve for these two in the middle, all right? 
So let's do some of these other labels. Those are our four valves. I'm going to erase this. So remember those numbers. You can pause the video now and write them in. I'm going to go through the rest of these. All right. So we'll get a marker here. So number one. Number one is right here from the top of the heart leading into the right atrium. That is the superior, meaning above, vena cava. All right. Number two. Number two is part of the pulmonary artery. It's the right pulmonary artery. It's on the right side and it's going out to the lungs away from the heart. So two is the right pulmonary artery. Artery goes away from the heart. Remember, artery and vein have nothing to do with oxygen. It's the direction of blood flow. Number three is the right atrium, obviously. That top chamber or room of the heart. Number four, we already did that. It's the right AV valve or the tricuspid valve. Number five, you can see it goes up and joins the right atrium from the lower extremities. That is the inferior, because it's coming from below, vena cava. Number six, the bottom room in the heart on the right side, so it's the right ventricle. Number seven, number seven is pointing to this thick muscular wall between the two ventricles. So right here, that really thick muscular wall, and that's called the septum. Number eight right here is pointing to the left side of the heart, and it's the bottom chamber, so it's the left ventricle. Number nine was the one of the valves we identified earlier, so we, it's on the left side, and it's between the atrium and ventricle. So number nine is the bicuspid valve, or the left atrioventricular valve or left AV valve. If you write AV instead of atrioventricular, I'm fine with that. So number nine, we already identified. Number 10 is the left atrium. It's the room at the top on the left side. All right. I'm gonna finish the rest of these labels. I don't have any room. So pause the video right now, get these down. Make sure that you have the same labels as me. So pause the video, I'm gonna erase these and we'll continue with number 11. All right, number 11. Number 11 is right here and it's leading into the left atrium. This is blood returning from the lung, so it is a vein and it's on the left side, so it is the left pulmonary vein. Left side of the heart coming from the lungs, returning from the lungs. Number 12. Number 12 is part of that slingshot, the pulmonary artery, right? We had the right side. Now we have the left pulmonary artery. Number 13. Now number 13 is right here and it's coming into the left atrium. But if we had this drawn, it would come from over here, this lung, and lead back into here. But they cut it off, so it would be leading back from the lung in here. So this is the right, even though it's joining at the left side of the part, or left side of the heart, 13 is the right pulmonary vein. It's bringing blood back to the heart from the lungs, the right lung. I put RT for right, shorthand, you guys know that. Number 14 is the aorta, you know that one, that's a major blood vessel, we have to know that one. And number 15 and 16, number 15 we already identified, that was the aortic valve, the one-way doorway up to the aorta, and number 16 was over here, that's the pulmonary valve, the one-way doorway to the pulmonary artery. All right. And that's it, it has 16 labels and there they all are for you. All right, I did those four valves first and then we did the rest of the parts. 
for blood flow, again, use this diagram, you know, and pause the video and go and, you know, put your blue and red highlighter to use if you need to. So pause the video now if you need to get these labels onto your diagram. I'll give you a second to do that. And then I'm going to fill out the other handout that we uh, had together that I posted to Edsby. So I'll do that now. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just going to grab these and move these to beside me. Got a feeling I may need those again. So we had this posted to your Edsby wall again. All right. So what we are going to do is it says starting from and ending with the right atrium. So right atrium is number one because it says start with it. Trace the flow of blood through the heart and body by numbering the following in the correct order. All right. So we know number one is right atrium. So if I look at my heart diagram again, right, and there's the one that shows blood flow, I can do this using this. So number one is the right atrium, right here, where my pen is. Then what's next? Well, blood goes down into the right ventricle. All right, so right atrium, number two is right ventricle. Then it goes up through this one-way doorway to the pulmonary artery, right here. This would be number three, pulmonary artery. The pulmonary artery goes away to the lungs, that's what pulmonary means, right? Etymology. So number four is lungs. It returns through the pulmonary veins. So number five is pulmonary veins. They join at the left atrium. So number six is here. It goes down to the left ventricle. Number seven is left ventricle right here. Then it goes up through the aorta. Number eight is aorta. Out to the cells of the body. Number nine is body cells. And then the used up blood from the body comes in through the vena cavas. Number 10 is the vena cava. They don't indicate superior or inferior. They're just saying both basically. All right. So that's how that would go. The next one, starting to and ending with the heart. So heart will be number one. Trace of flow of blood through the system. So I'm gonna do a little diagram here to help with that one. All right, so here's our heart. It doesn't look like that, I know. And let's say blood is going down to um, the kidney. The kidney, it actually looks like a kidney bean. So starting with the heart, the heart is number one, all right? Where would blood flow away from the heart? Well, it's, if it's going away, it's got to be starting with A. Away and A, arteries. So it's going to be arteries first. Arteries, right? So blood leaves and it goes through arteries. Those arteries get smaller and become arterioles. Those arterioles become even smaller as they reach the organ that they are going to be interfacing with. And inside of the organ, there will be capillaries, right? We saw capillaries in the wall of the small intestine. We saw capillaries in the uh, on the outside wall of the alveoli. There are capillaries and little things called nephrons in here. So our kidneys have lots of nephrons inside them, little filtration units. Capillaries run through those as well. So there's an exchange between the kidneys and the blood. The kidneys actually filter the blood. And now the blood is used up and it has to come back. Capillaries are incredibly small. Blood travels through one cell at a time through some of these things are that small. So we just don't jump right back into veins. We go in little veins called venules. And as they go back to the heart, they become larger and become veins. And then they become the vena cava and enter the heart. So using this, the heart is number one, arteries is two, arterioles three, capillaries four, venules five, veins six, and then we're back to the heart. All right, easy enough? All right, so that's how I would have reasoned that out. Pause the video, 
if you need to get that down or write that in. I'll put this finished off answer sheet on Ed's before you. I just like talking through them, helping you reason. You know, if I think how I would approach the question, um, maybe it helps you when you have to approach a similar question. All right. Number one. These are just fill in the blanks. These would be great for like multiple choices, right? Every fill in the blank can become a multiple choice. So number one, all right, I'll fill them in here. Blood vessels which carry blood away from the heart. Obviously that's arteries, all right? Arteries and away both start with A. Number two, vessels that carry blood back toward the heart veins. Number three, Tiny blood vessels with walls that are only one cell thick. These are the exchange centers between the blood and the organs of the body. Those are the capillaries. Four, thick wall that divides the heart in two. It's made of muscle. That's the septum. Number five, upper chambers of the heart that receive blood, either from the body or from the lungs. And those are the atria. Number six, well, the lower chambers. Those are the ventricles, right? They pump blood out of the heart, either out to the lungs or out to the rest of the body. Number seven, valve between the right atrium and right ventricle. That can be the tricuspid or right AV valve. Number eight, valve between the left atrium and left ventricle. Well, that's going to be the bicuspid or left AV valve. Number nine, valves found between ventricles and blood vessels. So we had those two. We had the pulmonary valve and the aortic valve. And I said those can sometimes be called semilunar. They clump those two together. So the answer there would be semilunar valves, although we know the one that goes up through the pulmonary artery is the pulmonary valve, and the one that leads to the aorta is the aortic valve. All right? Um, number 10. Pause the video if you need to get those down. I gotta, I'm running out of space, so and I don't think I'll fit them in here. Actually, you know what? I'm going to give it a go. 2020, the year living dangerously. God, that was a joke I said in class, and who knew it would be so real? Anyway, number 10, membrane around the heart. Around the outer perimeter of the heart is the pericardium. Cardium meaning heart, peri like perimeter, the outside. Number 11, the only artery in the body rich in carbon dioxide. Most arteries carry oxygen-rich blood away from the, uh, away from the heart, out to the body. But one carries oxygen-poor blood, and that's the pulmonary artery. It goes away from the heart, but it goes to the lungs. So the pulmonary artery. This red marker is not as good. Let's try another one. Number 12. Oh, there you go. A little better. The only vein rich in oxygen. Most veins come back to the heart from other areas of the body, and they're... The oxygen is being taken by those parts of the body. But the one that comes back from the lungs is carrying oxygen-rich blood. So pulmonary vein is number 12. All right. So those are the answers to the bottom section here. Um, I think that's it. All right. So I will take a picture of this sheet filled out, although you already have the answers to most of it. We went over it. And, uh, and I'll put the picture of the labeled heart onto Ed's before you and um, that's it hope everything was nice and clear hope you have a better understanding of things hope this lecture helped um, if you have any questions comments or concerns fire them off in the comments section below the video or you can reach out to me through the uh, Ed's B wall for the class if you're one of my students anyway I will talk to you soon good luck on your quiz tomorrow all right bye bye